Let's get this show on the road. We are here today to talk about memory. Uh, so I'm gonna go over what kind of memory it is that is out there, what exists, what types are there, what speeds, how much do you need, uh, what does your computer require, whether you want to upgrade or you're building a new system. I'm going to school you on pretty much everything and at the end I'll even show you how to install it, which is probably one of the easiest things in the world. Um, I, I seriously have never understood why people are so afraid to build computers. There's nothing to it really. I mean, literally, go to Google, type in how to build a PC, follow the instructions. It's like, you know, putting a toy together that, you know, some assembly required, that's all it is. Very simple, you save a ton of money on high-end systems and uh, you get the pride of doing it yourself. So, this is the second part of my how-to video series and I will be teaching you how to do things. So, let's talk first about uh, the different types of memory that are out there right now. Right now there's, uh, in general usage, there's about four. There's a whole bunch of different types of memory, but in general usage there's uh, SD RAM, which is the, you know, the first ones that were around uh, you know, a few years back and pretty much everything else after that has been SD-RAM, synchronous dynamic random access memory, uh, but that first one was the first kind. Now, uh, I'm gonna have little graphs over here, so take a look at the graph. Uh, SD-RAM came in PC-100 and PC-133. So if you're upgrading and you need to know what kind of RAM you have or you have that type of RAM, that's what you need to buy. Now, if you have that kind of stuff, it's time to upgrade your computer. It's old, it's gotta go, it's just really slow. You'll see that it's operating at 100 megahertz. We're gonna be going down all the way to the bottom of the list of the fastest stuff, and that stuff's operating at 2,000 megahertz. So 20 times faster. Now, the next one after uh, SD RAM was DDR, uh, double data rate. So those came in three speeds, 2100, 2700, and 3200, which are 266, 333, and 400 megahertz, respectively, going down the list. So those are gonna be a lot of older computers, uh, but not too old. DDR is still kind of expensive. It's uh, probably about 50 bucks a gig still, where uh, you know DDR2, which is the next one down the list, is actually uh, about 50 bucks for two gigs. So it's about half as much, and it's even cheaper than that. It's going down in price. Now, DDR2, as you can see, uh, starts at 4200, there's 5400, 6400, and then there's the overclocked ones, which are the 8500 and the 9600. Uh, now, if you look at the megahertz that correspond with those, it's 533, uh, 667, 800, 1066, and then the fastest is 1200. Most regular motherboards cut off at 800 for DDR2. 800 is going to be the top. The higher end motherboards, ones that are for gaming, uh, for workstations, those are the ones that are going to uh, you know, support the 1066 and the 1200 megahertz RAM which you do want to use if you're on a faster computer and your motherboard does support it, some don't. Now, uh, moving on to the next one, it's DDR3. DDR3 is very, very, very expensive still. It's about six times more expensive than DDR2. That may change uh, soon in the future, but you gotta keep in mind that it is much more expensive. You really don't need it, but if you are encoding high def videos uh, or encoding you know regular definition videos, but a large amount of them, if you're playing games, if you're into overclocking or into folding or uh, you know benchmarking, any of that kind of stuff, then you might actually want to get DDR3 uh, DDR3 starts at 1066 megahertz, which is PC8500. It goes to uh, 10,600, 12,800, 14,400, and then 15,000, uh, which are 1333, 1600, 1800, and 2000 megahertz, respectively. So those are all really, 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 really fast. And uh, just in case you want to know the difference between the PC8500 and the 1066 megahertz number, that's just a simple calculation. If you look at a stick of RAM, this one has coolers on it to keep it cool, but if you were to peel this off, there's eight chips on there. And uh, if you do eight, and you multiply it by 1066 megahertz, that comes up to 8500. So it's just telling you the overall speed of it versus the speed of one of the, the chips that's on there. Now, all the ones that I mentioned, except for the DDR3 ones, are available in SODIM. Now, SODIM is for laptops. Those are smaller. They have, they're, they're much smaller, the men for laptops are fatter. Uh, just keep that in mind, make sure you don't get the wrong one. If you wanna get a laptop, you look at SODIM. If you don't want it for a laptop, if it's for a desktop, you just wanna get the regular one. Um, the other type of RAMs that are out there, like FB DIMMs are fully buffered. Those are for servers. If you're running Intel uh, Xenon processors or whatever uh, Sempron processors for your servers, you're gonna be doing fully buffered DIMMs. If you're doing a skull trail system, it's gonna use a fully buffered DIMM. You're not gonna see those are very expensive. So again, DDR2, DDR on the older computers and then DDR3 in the future is uh, what's currently out there. And then there's also dual channel. Everything is dual channel. Dual channel sort of like PCI Express 2.0. It uses double the, the, the width of the interface of the RAM. So instead of having a 64-bit interface, it uses two times 64. So it's 128 bits of memory interface width. So what that does is it gives you double the throughput, which is really cool and uh, helps you a lot. So when you install dual channel though, you have to have matching sticks and they have to be in matched pairs and they have to go into the right slots. So uh, uh, let's move on now. I'm actually going to show you how to install it. This is really simple. This video is nice and short because there's not much for me to show you. This is how you install it. Zoom in so they can see. 
Now, there's two, you're gonna see four slots here, four dims. It's kind of hard to see, but you have four dims. One, two, three, and four. Now, when you're installing two gigs of RAM and you have two one gig sticks, you're gonna go here and here. But every motherboard is different. That's on this motherboard. Every motherboard's different. It's usually color coded. It's usually this one and this one for the first two. But always check your, your, uh, your manual just in case. Look at the instructions. So watch exactly how simple it is. Uh, now on DDR2, this little pin in the middle is gonna be a little bit offset. So there's only one way it goes. So match up the pin with the hole on the board. On DDR1, it's gonna be right in the middle so you can flip it either way. Now watch, you literally slide it in. See, now it's in, right? And these little things that hold it are down. So if you wanna lock them in, what you gotta do is push down on both sides so that it can hit this retainer clip. So you squeeze down on one side and the pin goes in. You squeeze down on the other and the pin goes in. Now, you make sure it's fully seated. You gotta do it kind of firmly, but once it's fully seated, that's it. Your RAM is done. So it's really, really simple. It's that easy. And uh, if you're gonna do your second gig of RAM, obviously it's gonna go into the matching slot. And that is all it is, ladies and gentlemen. That's all it takes to install RAM. Very simple. Uh, this, is, uh, this has been number two of my little how-to series. This will hopefully cut down my inboxes because I'm going a little bit out of my mind. And uh, if you have any questions on this, go ahead and email me on the RAM. If you have any uh, further stuff you want to discuss, go ahead but uh, email me here. And uh, I will see you guys in series three. I don't know what it's going to be yet, but I'll decide soon. It'll probably be video cards. So look for that, gamers. See you guys next time. I want everybody to know that no motherboards or RAM sticks were injured during the filming of this how-to video. Please, always wear a wrist wrap because it's really important to wear one. This is gonna protect your stuff, so don't forget to get one of these. Don't do what I do. Mine was actually on my ankle. Not really, but you know what to do. Wear a wrist wrap.